This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account, so we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I too was a black man who didn't know enough about our own history, so I began to dig deeper and do my own research. I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please share and support Teaching Black History. The Story of Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth was born Isabella Bomfrey in 1797. She was one of 12 children born to James and Elizabeth Bomfrey. When her slaveholder, Charles Hardenberg, died in 1806, nine-year-old Truth was sold at an auction with a flock of sheep for $100. In 1808, she was sold for $105 to a tarving keeper. Then 18 months later, she was sold again. Around 1815, Truth met and fell in love with an enslaved man named Robert from a neighboring farm. Robert's owner forbid their relationship. He did not want the people he enslaved to have children with people he was not enslaving because he would not own the children. One day, Robert sneaked over to see Truth. When owner and his son found him, they savagely beat Robert. Truth never saw Robert again after that day, and he died a few years later. The experience haunted Truth throughout her life. Truth eventually married an older enslaved man named Thomas. She bore five children. Late in 1826, Truth escaped to freedom with her infant daughter, Sophia. She had to leave her other children behind because they were not legally freed in the Emancipation Order. She lived in the home of Isaac and Maria Wagenin, who took her and her baby in until the New Year's State Emancipation Act was approved a year later. Truth learned that her son Peter, then five years old, had been sold illegally to an owner in Alabama. With the help of the Wagenins, she took the issue to court, and in 1828, after months of legal proceedings, she got back her son, who had been abused by those who were enslaving him. Truth became one of the first black women to go to court against a white man and win the case. In 1839, Truth's son Peter took a job on a welling ship from 1840 to 1841. She received three letters from him. Though, in his third letter, he told her he had sent five. Peter said he also never received any of her letters. When the ship returned to port in 1842, Peter was not on board and Truth never heard from him again. In 1843, June 1st, she changed her name to Sojourner Truth. She chose the name because she heard the Spirit of God calling on her to preach the truth. She told her friends, the Spirit calls me and I must go, and left to make her way traveling and preaching about the abolition of slavery, taking along only a few possessions in a pillowcase. She traveled north. In 1844, she joined the Northampton Association of Education and Industry in Florence, Massachusetts. Founded by abolitionists, the organization supported women's rights and religious tolerance, as well as pacifism. Truth delivered her first anti-slavery speech later that year. In 1851, she attended the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio where she delivered her famous speech on women's rights, later known as, Ain't I a Woman? Her speech demanded equal rights for all women, as well as for all blacks. Advocating for women and African Americans was dangerous and challenging. The pressures and severity of her speech did not get to truth. However, truth took to the stage with a demanding and composed presence audience members were baffled by the way she carried herself and were hesitant to believe that she was even a woman, prompting the name of her speech, 
ain't I a woman? Over the next 10 years, truth spoke before dozens, perhaps hundreds of audiences. In 1858, someone interrupted a speech and accused her of being a man. Truth opened her blouse and revealed her breast. In 1870, Truth tried to secure land grants from the federal government to former enslaved people, a project she pursued for seven years without success. Truth spoke about abolition, women's rights, prison reform, and preached to the Michigan legislature against capital punishment. Not everyone welcomed her preaching and lectures, but she had many friends and staunch support among many influential people at the time. Truth died at her Battle Creek home on November 26, 1883.